Hello, it's Scott Rockfile back with another podcast review for your ears. Going to be talking about the new 4K edition of the 1982 classic Poltergeist. June 1982, man, I saw this in the theater. I went back and saw it again. This is one of my favorite movies. I haven't watched it in years. Holds up really well. The short review of this is Poltergeist was released a few weeks ago in a brand new 4K edition, and it looks spectacular. I had no idea. Reviews were good. And I was going to buy it anyway because I don't have a 4K copy of it. I haven't, I think I do have a Blu ray copy, but I literally haven't watched this movie in well over a decade, if not more. And so it sat on the shelf, and I was going to watch it before Halloween, and I, I really kind of forgot about it. It came out at the same time as um, Lost Boys or Fright Night, one or the other. So I popped it in tonight and really was blown away by it. If you've never seen it, then watch it immediately. If you have, then go get the 4K edition immediately before it sells out. Black Friday sales are in full effect right now, coming and going. Grab them while you can. Things are selling out already. Steven Spielberg wrote the story. He co-wrote the screenplay. He was an executive producer, and he got Toby Hooper to direct it. 1982, Steven Spielberg was on the rise. Toby Hooper was much respected for doing things like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It was weird to everybody at the time that somebody from R-rated horror movies like Toby Hooper was brought into Amblin Entertainment and Hall to direct, you know, a Steven Spielberg movie. By the way, associate producer Kathleen Kennedy I saw in the final credits. That was cool. This is an MGM movie back in the day. The rights have moved around a little bit now. Oh, and don't let me forget about the score from Jerry Goldsmith. Wow. When I started watching the movie, I started writing down, there were all sorts of tiny little things that were just really great. Things in the screenplay, little things uh, in the movie, just tiny things, nothing major, nothing that would change the flavor of the movie, but it does. It's all these little things that add up to, well, I don't, Again, don't want to get into too many spoilers on a movie that's 40 years old, but in the opening scenes, the dog is going around to the different bedrooms in the house. It's how we, it's how we meet the family, and it's how we see the dog smart enough to find food on, in bed and, and on night tables and things like that. It, it's a creative scene. It's interesting. There are so many little things, things that are said, things in the background, things that happen off camera that they turn around and are there that... that fill this movie with all sorts of the little cracks and crevices of a movie don't always get filled with this stuff that that's kind of a Spielberg trademark and over the years you've heard the controversy that maybe Steven Spielberg actually directed the movie there was rumors that Toby Hooper was doing too many drugs and Steven had to step in but Steven released statements Toby released statements before he died other people have released statements other than a couple of the actors Pretty much everybody agrees that Toby directed it with a lot of help from Steven Spielberg. And there are a lot of things in the story, the music cues, some other things that are very Spielbergian. But watching the movie now, it definitely wasn't directed by him. Not the editing, not not some of the scenes. It's just his wheelhouse was not horror. He's never done anything that was as edgy as this was. It's pretty edgy in places. It's pretty tame, but then it goes some places that you're like, wow, you know, for a PG movie, it gets really PG. I mean, this, this could have been a PG 13 movie. It was made for $10 million. Can you imagine? Had state of the art special effects from industrial light and magic and Richard Edlin was nominated for three Academy Awards, including special effects, but it lost to ET, which came out the same year. This is why Spielberg did not direct Poltergeist. He was busy with E.T., but he did produce Poltergeist. He was on set a lot. Joe Beth Williams, Craig T. Nelson. Wow. You know, I looked up Joe Beth. She was in so many movies back then, and I haven't seen her a lot. She's still making stuff. She's still around. 
she eventually became a director. Her first short film that she directed was Academy Award nominated. Pretty impressive, actually. Always liked her. Craig T. Nelson is great in this, too. The pot smoking scene? That's kind of out there. Didn't, had forgotten that. So that, that brings up a funny thing. When the bird dies, when Tweety dies, they have a cigar box. When um, they're smoking pot in their bedroom, they have a cigar box. Who is smoking all the cigars? You know, why do they have all these? But I remember back in, in the 70s and 80s, we had cigar boxes. And my dad smoked cigars, but not those. We got those from my grandmother's house or something. Everybody seemed to have cigar boxes back then. Jerry Goldsmith does the score, and I'm sorry, it's very John Williams-esque with the flourishes. It it has hints of Jaws, you know. Um, I could get into the symphonic terminology of some of the things that happen, but it's just a wonderful score. Um, there's a lot of it that's not John Williams, but, you know, one thing that especially early Spielberg's movie have are great scores that help tell the story, and this one goes along with it quite a bit. Um, matter of fact, in this new 4K edition, the surround sound is nice. Um, when you come across some of these older movies, some of the sound effects sound a little dated, and this one sounds better than most. Not as good as something like um, Heavy Metal, but better than some of the other things I've gotten recently. But the music sounded wonderful. That's mixed beautifully. It sounds wonderful every time it swells into all the channels surrounding you. It just, it's very clear and, and sounds very modern. Now, it didn't get a new Dolby Atmos mix, so there's nothing that really falls out of the sky, but it does envelop you. It's a pretty good mix. It sounds like it's the one that was on the previous Blu-ray, but I'm not sure. But the picture... Some scenes, the movie still looks like a dingy 1982 movie that it always has, but other scenes look so spectacular. In the beginning of the movie, Heather O'Rourke, Carrie Ann, walks down the stairs to the, the TV that's flashing, and they use multiple strobe lights to get this effect of the flashes in the room. When she's walking down the stairs, it is so clear it is almost three-dimensional. You get an almost 3D image of her walking down those stairs and into that more cavernous room. And walks up to the TV, and as she's talking to the TV, her face is lit up by these strobes, and it's just sharply bright. It's hard to describe. Um, but as it flashes, it's just incredibly sharp, like it's a brand new film. There's some outdoor scenes that look that way as well. It's a native 4K transfer. They've really done a great job. It looks very filmic. It looks very much like a movie from 1982, but like there's no print damage. It, it looks sparkling. It looks like, you know, this is the best the movie has ever looked. And it's one of my favorites of all time. It definitely, this is the best it has ever looked. It wouldn't be nice if there was an Atmos mix, but it doesn't sound like they had the pieces parts to do that. So I haven't really gone through the extras. The Blu-ray included is new. I confirmed that online. I did not check it out or watch it. Um, but it also has the extras on it, so I'll go through that at some point. Poltergeist surprised me in how smart the script is. The writing is great. How well it's acted. Everybody's great in the movie, even the child actors. Wow. And the funny stuff and the timely stuff and the little things, the tiny little things that filled out the scenes that made it look like a real family, made it feel like a real home. You just don't get that in some modern movies. You see people come in from school and they throw down their book bags and they go up to the room and all that kind of stuff, but there's not the little things that happen in a family. And this movie's chocked full of those little things, little jokes, little things that happen. It really makes a difference in making you feel like a, a family. And the fact they don't go to the police and they reach out to these paranormal investigators, then the paranormal investigators get shocked. It, the movie plays out very well. And again, not to get into too many spoilers, but the fact that we have a happy ending and then the movie's not over yet. Some movies are really trying to do that now, but it's been a while that we've had that kind of false ending and it continued on. Uh, this movie just went up in my estimation. You know, it's one of my favorites from the early 80s. And now, 
I'll pull this out anytime. It's a really great movie. How shockingly good. Probably from a four to a four and a half, I would say. And 4K is the way to go. Looks amazing. There's a lot of spectral lights. um, And they use strobes and other bright lights at the time to simulate these things on the actors' faces when they were going to put in the special effects after. Amazing. The movie looks incredible. Sounds great. Definitely doesn't sound its age. It's a nice package. The steelbook, by the way, is matte finish, so it won't show a whole bunch of uh, fingerprints. It's of the scene of uh, Joe Beth Williams trying to climb out of the pool that's being dug in the backyard, and the rain's coming in. It's basically two-tone gray black with her red dress. Um, artwork's okay. I think I like the artwork on the the um, regular 4K a little bit better and the original artwork best, but the steelbook did come out pretty good. Um but packaging is packaging, and the movie looks great in 4K. Sounds great. Forgotten how good this movie really was. If you haven't seen Poltergeist in years, you remember the big stuff, but it's the little stuff that make it great, so go check it out. Poltergeist is available now. It came out at the end of September on 4K. Um, you can still, I don't know if you can find the Steelbook, but you can find the regular 4K. And like I said, look for those Black Friday sales. They're on now. Scott Hamilton, I'm Rockfile. Thanks for checking out this podcast. Many more on the way. Thank you for listening. Have a spectacular day. <laughs>